The history of food is the history of uh, migrations and um, moving technologies. Over the centuries, as people from Europe uh, and Africa made their way to North America, uh, we've seen some of the most incredible early examples of fusion uh, in, in the world. I never really saw people necessarily bringing their exact dish, but they were always kind of forced to bastardize it when they got here. Colonies to colonizers or vice versa. The discovery of the new world changed food. What's interesting is that they're foods that are considered staples or fundamental to a country or a culture's cuisine. The introduction of the tomato to Europe didn't happen until a couple hundred years ago. It wasn't, it didn't grow up in Italy. It's hard to find anyone in the world who isn't indebted to the potato, and that's from here. What's great about Louisiana is, you know, you've got everything from Canada coming down, everything from France coming in, everything from even like Mexico and the Gulf kind of seeping in. The ultimate culinary appropriation, this American Southern food, traces direct, not just techniques, but foods, plants, agricultural systems from the slaves displaced from Africa. That's, you know, that's how we got rice. We didn't know how to farm rice. Okra. I love it. Okra is such a part of Southern cooking. And it's like, you realize this is not from the South. This is from south of the equator. This is from Africa. It's like gumbo. Okra is the ingredient that really defines that dish, combined with charcuterie, essentially, in the andouille sausage. It's very traditional. It's in New Orleans, everybody loves the soup. You use the polytrini vegetables, and normal use in New Orleans and Louisiana. Peppers, and celery, plus the yellow onions. Gumbo is based on a Senegalese soup. The settlers were starving and sent four animals to come. So pigs, cows, and goats. A lot of the settlers were eating undesirable parts of the animals. Necessity led them to eat nose to tail. Organ meats, not only are they they're really tasty, but it allows us to really respect the animal and make full use of it. The advent of preservation of, of especially proteins. Sausage making is a great example. You know, using spices like chilies, using salt, using smoke, and ensuring that you have that jerky or you have that sausage or you have that cut of meat that is going to sustain you and your family throughout the course of a long year until you have more of it to make again. You look at dishes like scrapple and the variety of different hashes that probably came out of the European invasion of what is now the United States, oftentimes in the Northeast, and their need to utilize every single part of what was probably almost always a pig. A lot of these like two ingredient dishes were just what was left over. You know, there was a crisis of economy. You had to eat what you, you got there. And if you were lucky enough to get a cut of meat, it was going to need eight hours to cook. But damn it if they didn't figure out how to make it the most delicious. A feijoada é, é um ritual, né, que se acontece todos os sábados. Tem uma certa influência com a África e com a Portugal, que colonizaram o Brasil, né? E as primeiras feijoadas que foi em Recife, em Pernambuco, primeiros lugares que se venderam a feijoada. Diz a lenda que a feijoada surgiu com os escravos, que os restos de, de carne que sobrava dos, do pessoal da fazenda iam pra, para os escravos e eles faziam essa, colocava tudo no, no feijão para fazer a feijoada. So adobo is a national dish of the Philippines and you can find this anywhere. Today we're using pork belly. Adobo is a technique that's native to the Philippines and it basically means to cook in vinegar. And what I love about this dish is it takes the influence from the Spanish and the Chinese and brings it together to make it a unique dish from the Philippines. The Spaniards coined the phrase adobo which actually just means marinade. There is always this exchange and I think that no one really minds the fact that you can cook this or I can buy this or I can make your thing. You're familiar with postmodernism and the concept of the shrinking earth, you know, I mean, it's why wouldn't that apply to the things that we eat? If someone's traveling from one part of the world to the other, they're going to come with their own techniques. So I think your first stab is you're going to take the technique that you know and you're going to try to apply it to what's on hand. America is a melting pot and I always kind of think, you know, well, what do we bring that's original and new that we didn't just take from other countries? But it's, you know, that's what is original and new is, is how we worked with each other to come up with these new cuisines. <laughs>